Okay, so clearly the best solution is to not make the space junk in the first place. Yeah. Uh, but that's not always going to work. I mean, no. first of all, there's a lot of space junk that's been up there a long time already, from before the time we were good at doing orbiting. Uh, currently, the deorbiting is, you know, 60%, but that still leaves 40% that aren't deorbited either because something goes wrong because people didn't even try. Yep. Um, what are we going to do about all that? So this is where there's a big effort going upon it. And one of the ways first is to look at, well, just as the tracking of junk has been done differently, the policies of how to clean up the junk has to be done differently. Now, the first part, which is kind of the seemingly the easiest part, is to keep the satellites going longer. Now, that kind of sounds easier said than done. The primary reason a satellite becomes old is it runs out of fuel. It's had to use that fuel to keep its orbit because it's slowly being pushed and pulled around. It has to use that fuel for operation, and it has to use that fuel to avoid other junk. And as soon as that satellite runs out of fuel, even if it may functionally work, you can't steer it, you can't alter it, and it really just becomes another piece of junk. It's not efficient, it's costly, and it's dangerous. So there are now plans of essentially building fuel stations in space. So you launch a satellite, uh, and it has a reserve of fuel on board. And the primary mission is that another satellite could dock with it and get a fuel transfer. And we're not talking about a lot of fuel here in terms of volume, right? It doesn't take, um, you know, 40 liters to fill up a satellite. In fact, it's actually a relatively small amount in terms of weight and volume a satellite needs to keep up with it because you're only talking about very minor thrusting adjustments out here. So this is the primary way people are thinking of. Uh, and this is actually already put into practice. This is from Northrop Grumman. And so this is a what they call a mission extender vehicle. So they have a satellite and there's actually another satellite right at the end here. So they built a satellite that was able to dock, and this essentially had a jerry can, a petrol can, transferred fuel to this other satellite, and then extended the lifetime of that second satellite by about 10 years, they think about. Now that's a pretty big impact. Okay, so that, I mean, that sounds great in principle, but I mean, um, I, I'm immediately thinking of lots of problems with this. Yeah. Um, one problem is, it's not like on Earth where you can pull off the highway into a petrol station That's and right. fill up. You're traveling at you know, very high speeds and in different orbits. So if exactly. something's in a polar orbit, it's not going to refuel something in an equatorial exactly. orbit. And in fact, the orbits have to be exactly the same to do this. That's right. Again, it's, it's like merging with traffic. You can't just say, oh, I'm going to roughly be in the lane. No, you have to be in the lane. And you have to match up at, as he said, enormous speeds. The equipment also has to work, right? You know, the petrol can has to fit into the petrol tank. So you have to either design satellites that are flexible in terms of fueling, or you have to build it in such a way that it can service multiple types of satellites. And there's still the risk that even if this all works, something goes wrong in the docking or undocking stage, you still fry an electronics. So it, it is not without risk. But it is at least a principle that you can think of doing it. And you know, this is actually not a unique idea. Uh, this is a vision of this from the 1970s. Now in the 1970s, they didn't think about robotic vehicles. So they had someone in the outpost. Essentially, this quite literally is the space petrol station worker who would go and dock your satellite. So we've certainly talked about this in terms of missions to Mars or whatever. Yes. The idea being, uh, I know for some of those giant SpaceX craft, that you launch it and then you bring the fuel up in another launch. Exactly. In and that this... case, you, you know, you're just trying to refuel one object, you know what fuel it's going to be in. But I mean, if you're <coughs> just a normal space junk and most of the existing space junk, yeah. you can't refuel. Exactly. It was never designed to be refueled. Uh, there isn't a nice nozzle on the outside that you could connect things to. And the rocket's probably tumbling as well, so that's, that's going to be very difficult. That's right. So it can only work for a handful at best, and generally only the satellites that you've probably built yourself. So 
I there's some, if there's a whole bunch of satellites in the same orbit, yes. then you can move around that orbit refueling things. But as you saw from the space shuttle, they're going all over the place. Exactly. You're not going to have a fuel station that'll handle most of them, unless that fuel station itself had enough fuel to change its orbit drastically, in which case it becomes a bit counterproductive. You, most of your fuel is used to get your fuel station to change orbit to refuel things. So that's right. So it's going to be a way that is good, but it's not going to put that big of a dent in on it. And as you said, even if you have a craft, and this is the current plan of the moon, you have fuel depots that, well, you can dock into and that. This is good for practical travel purposes, but it's really not going to solve the space junk problem. So we have to find other ways of dealing with this.